it is an incredibly challenging time uh, and uh, to have both a cancer diagnosis and have to seek treatment during a COVID pandemic is, uh, is daunting for even, uh, even the consideration of that. Um, however, um, the cancer diagnosis is not going away. As I mentioned, this is an aggressive cancer. Uh, we are uh, recommending that patients come in and that they have the same diagnostic workup that they would have even if COVID uh, was not here. It is essential that we still do that uh, testing. It's actually even more important that we do that because if we are able to identify mutations in genes like FLT3, FLT3, or isohydrate dehydrogenase, which is IDH1 or IDH2, patients that have those abnormalities can get lower dose chemotherapy to at least hold their disease in check until it is potentially safe to give them that high dose chemotherapy. So there are national guidelines have been drafted saying, bring those patients in, get the diagnosis, do that testing, if possible, give them lower dose chemotherapy regimens that are not going to make them hospitalized for four to five uh, weeks. Try to keep them as an outpatient, keep them home, keep them in isolation, minimize their visits. Uh, it, it, we are uh, trying to accommodate our patients uh, in the time of COVID while still guaranteeing that we're treating them as much as possible and as safely as possible uh, to control both the disease and minimize their exposure. So our center has uh, uh, been very proactive because um, many of our patients are on chemotherapy. We know that older individuals are at higher risk of mortality from the disease. We know that uh, uh, many patients, up to 20 or 25% of cancer patients or even more that get the COVID have poor outcomes. So we've been very aggressive. We are, have been screening all visitors, all employees uh, coming into our center for some time now. Um, we are testing all of our inpatients. Uh, we are testing uh, patients uh, for COVID prior to elective surgeries. And we're moving forward with plans to test uh, additional outpatients prior to elective imaging uh, to minimize the risk to our staff members as well as to safely get those patients identified. Um, all of our leukemia patients prior to aggressive chemotherapy or any chemotherapy are being tested uh, in the newly diagnosed setting for COVID. Um, we are managing the best that we can, but the message that we want to um, have out there is that it's uh, and many times not safe to delay or uh, not come for cancer therapy. Um, I've had many patients call me and say, I'm nervous about coming in because of COVID. And I said, well, um, it's not 100% that if you come that you will get the COVID, but it is 100% that if you do not get cancer treatment that your cancer will progress. This is not going to go away anytime soon. Uh, that this uh, may take weeks, even months, before we get back to a, a level of normalcy. And acute myeloid leukemia is not a disease that can wait. Uh, if you do not get treatment for your acute myeloid leukemia for two or three months, you are not going to be around to see the end of the COVID. So we are emphasizing to our patients to come in, get the care, we will work with you to provide uh, the treatment in the safest way possible, uh, but don't sit at home and, and, and let your cancer progress. I, I think that would be the worst. The worst outcome for me uh, would be to, to see patients coming back or uh, after this is all over who were scared to come in and that I might have helped or prolonged their life or treated their disease, uh, but they were scared and they didn't come. Our jobs as clinicians and at, at Roswell Park and, and throughout the country is to really provide the best care for our cancer patients. Uh, and that's, that is um, uh, our job to figure out ways to, to deliver that care safely for our patients. So I would encourage patients out there to, to seek the care that they need to, to get the chemotherapy, get the diagnoses, get the drugs, and we will make it through this. Uh, but not to ignore uh, the cancer diagnosis and the cancer treatment that is essential to you seeing the end of this and to be living through uh, many, uh, many other uh, crises that we're going to be having.
So I want everybody to stay strong, stay healthy, stay inside. I've told my patients there's no treatment for the COVID as much as possible. Um, keep yourself self-isolated and go to see your doctor for your cancer treatment.